Ace on the beat, make it boom. Yo, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It. I'm Alan Ford. I'm Will Hill. And today's episode is about the documentary called Taking Care, Take Care of Maya. Right? Taking Care of Taking Maya. Care of, no, it's also Take Care of Maya. Oh, Take Care, yeah, take take care, care of, of Maya. Megan. Megan. Megan? Yes. Megan? I never said Maya. I said Megan. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's on Netflix. The documentary is called Take Care of Megan. It's about uh, the Kowalski family and how uh, Megan was sick. In child protective services, mm -hmm. technically, in child protective services custody, which they should never be in child protective services custody like that. And there's this whole big deal about it. Let, let's just start from the beginning. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it started off with Jack Kowalski, Megan's father, and who met uh, Beata Kowalski, who's Megan's mom. Uh, I think they met uh, Beata's from Poland. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. Polish. She's an immigrant. Yeah. They went to high school in Chicago. She went to high school in Chicago. So our fellow Chicago slash Poland. There's a lot of Polish in Chicago. Yeah, it is. A lot of Polish. Chicago has a lot of everything. Yes. Chicago's just extremely segregated. Yes. <laughs> Chicago's is very confusing with the Jewtown Polishes. That's confusing. Let's not. Okay. But <laughs> on top of it. But she couldn't speak English very well, but she had a teacher. She went to class and taught herself how to speak English. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a degree. She graduated college and became a nurse. She was a nurse. So, and then uh, they, she wanted a child really bad, but had difficulty having a child. Right. Which, you know, that tends it to happen. It happens. Especially, it's crazy when you want kids, you always have difficulty getting them. But when you don't want I kids, think, you I get them like that. I think we underestimate what can go wrong when having a child. Right. So, the human body is not perfect. There's a lot of anomalies. There's a lot of just things that don't work properly. Uh, we see kids all the time. Like you said, you see a lot of people who take having kids for granted and you don't think about the people who want kids who cannot have them. True, true, true. And uh, so, and then she ended up having kids. Her firstborn was Maya. Maya was her firstborn. Mm -hmm. uh, this was like, I want to say mid-2000s that um, she was born. Early 2000s. Early 2000s she was born. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, early 2000s she was born. Then uh, two years later, they had their son, Cal. And uh, in 2016, Beata was a nurse helping people at home. And her husband was a firefighter. Or was he retired? Did he retire? Or was he just firefighter? Because they had a nice ass house. I, I remember. They had a really nice they house. Did. They did. They really lived a nice comfortable house. life. They were not rich. They were not rich. They, they, they lived very comfortable. You don't have to be rich to be comfortable. 100%. You don't. You don't have to be rich to be comfortable. They were max. Like, uh, Maya got sick. She felt a lot of pain in her body. She went to a bunch of doctors. Mainly her legs. Yeah, mainly her legs. It was just, she said, what, burning sensation? Yeah, she said her legs were burning. She, what, you know, stomach aches, right? Headaches. Stomach, yep. And she Eight. was seven? Yep. She was seven. And I think a lot of doctors said it's probably mental because nothing was wrong with her. Right. They She was complaining from all these issues. And when they would test what how they would normally test, they couldn't f they wouldn't find anything that would show up in these certain tests. Right. And they, because she had, no, I, I wrote it. She had breathing problems. Her skin was on fire. She kept getting headaches and she couldn't walk. Right. She couldn't walk, and all these doctors said it was all in her all mind. All in her mind, right? Which I, it I could happen. That's new. I never heard that. No, it could happen. Like mentally, you just be like, "Damn, I can't do all this stuff." Um, you know? basically, they were saying she was lying. Okay. Not like, oh, this is happening, but it's in her head. No, yeah. she's lying. Basically, that's Which, that's what they were saying. Right, because they just lying for attention. Right. Yeah. Because she was a little kid, but but her mom and her parents, her par neither one of her, neither one of her parents believed that. So they just kept going to doctor after doctor after doctor, doctor because she was, she was uncomfortable. Right. And her mom literally documented everything. Literally documented everything. Every doctor's appointment, everything that they said, and her being a nurse. I mean, of course, it don't make her a doctor, but she you know understand medical jargon and terms and right. And all the stuff the medical cheap like doctors and stuff know is knowledge anybody could acquire. It's tons of books and research you could do on your own. They just went to school for it. Right. And they didn't have any answers. Uh and then they came across uh Doctor Kirkpatrick. Anthony Kirkpatrick. Anthony Kirkpatrick. Who said Maya had C R P S complex regional pain syndrome. Right. And I've then, never heard of that until I watched the documentary. Yeah, it, they talked about it. It didn't seem like it was something rare, right? It's just something most doctors are not testing for. Yeah. 
And anybody who's ever had anything medical going on, you know, if you're not testing for something specific, you won't find it. So, you know, he took this certain test to see if that's what she had. And to, for him, that was the conclusion. She had complex regional pain syndrome, which we would com- we're going to refer to as CRPS. 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 You know, when I first watched this documentary and I read the like the description of it, yeah. I'm thinking there's a do you remember the girl who mom like? Yeah, I thought it was gonna be something like that. That's, I mean, I didn't. I thought this. I don't know. When I went, I said I was all in favor of. Oh, this is it, right? But right. then she get to the hospital, or whatever, and they can't. There is no cure for this. Um, but they were just giving her pain relief, right? In the form of uh, ketamine. Ketamine, and I think uh, ketamine. I I thought was was it ketamine and meth. Is that something else? Or meth has a whole bunch of stuff, what but is, yes. What is uh, ketamine? Ketamine is in there. Yeah. Okay. Didn't know that. Meth, the baby. Yeah. Meth. Meth is a whole stirring pot of drugs. Yes. Yeah. But but this was this was prescribed to her. That's the same thing like with fentanyl. Almost said subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing with fentanyl. Fentanyl was in a lot of drugs. It's just when taken uh, concentrated or in abundance, you get too high, and that's what people are dying from. Anyway. Right. They gave her certain dirt. and to let you guys know, uh, CRPS. Effects would would that be pre? That's not preteen, nine to eleven year old. That's before teen. Before teen. <laughs> preteen. My bad. Okay, cool, cool. That'd be preteen. Uh, yeah, no. They said CRPS usually happens between the ages of nine and eleven, and mostly uh, females. Right. So, all right, that happened, and then uh, so the doctor prescribed a little, prescribed some ketamine to her. Uh, for pain relief, for it pain was not relief. not for a cure. It was not going to fix it, but it would make her more comfortable. But then she was in a ketamine coma for how I forget how long it was. But no, was so the doc, doctor uh, Kirkpatrick, Dr. Kirkpatrick had heard um, that they can put her in a drug induced coma, a ketamine coma, uh-huh. which has been shown to get rid of CRPS, right? Like completely, they go in a coma for three days. They come out of it and CRPS is gone and people grow up to live perfectly normal lives, right? But it's not authorized to be done in America. They had to go to Mexico and Dr. Kirkpatrick knew some yeah. people, right? So they referred them. They go to Mexico and they have this done. She stayed in the coma for... And this was around 2016. Uh, 15. 15, 2015, yeah. She stayed in the coma for five days. Okay, so right, she was sleep. She was sleep for five days. Right, I think some, something happened, and they had to keep her under it longer. Now, is it a coma? Is it if you like just sleep for five days, or you just sleep for five days? You know, no, she was medically induced into the coma. Okay, medically induced coma. Right, so, so yeah. like she was not awake during those times. See, so if you put medical in front of it, it's okay. What other type of coma? I mean, just, like I'm a trauma just saying coma? anything. If you put medical in front of it. You put medical in front of it. It's okay. Like what? Huh? Like what? Give me another example. Medical pre-ejaculation on her back. What? I got a no. disease. Uh, no. <laughs> I got a, I'm sick. I got a disease. I'm sorry. It's a medical condition. No. That could be a medical condition. No. You, you, as soon as you like turn around, you're like, oh, I'm done. Medical condition. <laughs> See, you just put medical in front of medical murder. It's just murder. Medical. No. Happened in the hospital. Right. It was. Remember, it was a bunch of nurses killing people. That was a medical murder. They oh, just yeah, called it murder. It oh shit. Yep. It was. All right. Anyway. But then she gets out of it. She's feeling all better. Right. Yo. She she did her five days well, in a coma in Mexico, and come back and she's doing her like physical therapy. Mm-hmm. Right. She was doing the thing where like to reach up. Right, so she couldn't move her arm at first, but yeah. then when she came out the coma, she was, she was able, able to, to move put her, her arm way back. Yeah. It stuff. was. Um, I want to say borderline a miracle because uh, they they had exhausted all their other options. This was their last resort, mm-hmm. and it worked. They did. Maya was perfectly fine. She was perfectly fine. She was, she was still in a wheelchair though. She was still right. She had to get the strength back in her legs, right. but she was not in pain. Not in pain. And was learning to walk again. Right. Like she was on, well on her way. Right. Now, Doctor Kirkpatrick did say it could come back. It could. And on October 7th, 2016, uh, it came back. she had a relapse. You know, it was, screen, it was a 
what I want to say a tornado tornado storm it was a yeah. storm made her scream and say all the stuff her tummy hurt uh, the feeling just came back yeah, it, it just crept right back in you it's, know so, so they now rushed. she was dealing with it what was the, was the Saint Saint Jude Saint John what's the name of John the Hopkins John Hopkins there it is John Hopkins Hospital they rushed her there and then that's you know right they they explained it to the doctors and the nurses everything that they've been through. Now, mind you, CRPS is not something well known. That's not. Um, it should be, but it's not. I, see, I feel like in the medical field, y'all need to hear all this stuff and take it into consideration. This right. is a medical diagnostic diagnosis, whatever, and they didn't at all believe them. So they get there and they telling them that you know all the trials that they've been through and how they were prescribing her ketamine and the microdoses to help deal with the pain and. Um, but the doses was larger than what they would usually do in the hospital. So, which raised rag flags to all the nurses, all the staff in the hospital. Wait, what was that called? What was that called you said? Huh? Which red, red flags. Okay. All right, cool. You didn't say red, though. I said red. All right. What, what does it sound like? I said? It sounded like you said rad. No, red flags. Okay, all right, cool. cool. Red flags. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, which caused everybody to now question whether this girl was safe, right? Right. Be- because of that one show where the, the mom was um, lying to the doctors and said her daughter yes. had all this stuff. They um, based it on, well, that was real life. Right, yeah. that was real life. And p- some parents do that, right? They, you know, for reasons unknown to me. <laughs> so they call Child Protective Services. And that girl stayed at John Hopkins for a while. For they a call time. it Munchausen's by proxy. Munchausen's by oh, I got that. Munchausen by pro, medical child abuse. Yeah, Munchausen syndrome is medical child abuse. Put medical in front of it. So. <laughs> this guy. Munchausen. Munchausen's by, by proxy. proxy. Medical child. They could have just left it in medical child abuse. Why put the big words? See, that's why I couldn't be a doctor. <laughs> that's unnecessary. Like a heart attack, you having a cardiac, what, what is it? Cardiac, cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest. No, just say heart attack. How hard is that? Because they they say things in relation to the real terms of your body. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's, it's just make it simple. You okay. Know, just because you know doctor talk. I mean, we know comedy talk. What like what? Well, everybody knows comedy talk. No, I can't, I can't. I feel like I could walk to somebody random and be like, "You know what a callback is?" Okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Who? Uh, okay, back to some lady named Sally Smith. Who was she? Like a director of the of the uh, child protection service, something like that. Something like that. She was in charge of all the. She made the decision on whether the kids were should be taken away. Yeah, she or was not. a bitch, man. Hey, for real, for real. Y'all, yeah, y'all hear about it. Yeah, yeah. Y'all gotta watch it. She was a bitch, dude. So, and just kept child protective there. services come in and they go, yeah, no, this is my child by proxy, and now the parents no longer have no control over what happens with their daughter. They can't even see her. Right. They take her out and, um, you know, they can't even talk to her. Not on the phone. Uh, everybody in the staff, all the staff at the hospital, said it was the mom, but not the dad, because the mom was very adamant on the dosage, uh, what she should be taking, how it should be administered, all that stuff. So like, oh no, the mom is uh, perpetuating this, that she's sick. And we're doing all our tests and we're not finding nothing because they was not doing the test. Not at all. They wasn't doing what the, the mom CRPS. said she should, she did. Well, they, they were not doing what the mom said they should do. Right. And she's a nurse. And I would think, you know, other nurses, would be like, oh, well, you should do this and all that stuff. I thought they were like communication. Right, like if it was a cop and another cop, you'd be like, oh, okay, let me do what right. he said. No, right. no, it's that's like not. A, that's like giving a comic a punchline. They go up and do something totally different after they just came and asked you for your help. <laughs> but no, nah, so it's like, I get it though, because who would be able to medically abuse their child better than a nurse? That is true. So, yeah, you have to even more so. But a lot of people didn't like um, her mother because she once she knew what she was talking about and was very stern on what needed to be done. And that's just, so, which challenged their authority, which and then really made them turn on her. Yeah, but that's just her being Polish. 
I don't feel like Older that's just, I feel like very stern. No, I feel like that's just her being a mom. That too. She's worried about her baby and she wants to see her baby. No, I'm just, I'm just saying the reason they even thought about this is because the way she came off. Oh, she, this needs to be done. This needs to be done. This, this is how you do this, which made them feel like she thought they didn't know what they was doing. Right. And so, of course, a lot of times when people feel challenged and they feel, they do things to be like, I'm going to show you type stuff, which I feel like this was a strong case of that. Okay. All right. Um, like I said, child protective service took over. Parents no longer in charge. No. Um, Maya stayed in the hospital for what ninety two days. Ninety two days under yeah. child protective services. Ninety two days. Well, along those ninety two days, she had this lady named Doctor Kathy next to her. That's like a social worker. A social worker. Yep. Yeah. Was in the room the whole time on the call. The mom would call because at first the parents they wouldn't let the parents talk to the girl mm-hmm. at first. But then they let him call her. Dr. And Kathy Beatty. Kathy would sit there and be across the line and tell the mom she can't talk about this, she can't talk about that. Yeah. Because she was no longer, uh, um, a parental rights was taken. Right. But they didn't want them prying at the door to trying to get information on, you know, how they're taking care of her, to what medications and what dosage and none of, none of stuff right. like that. But Kathy Beatty got a little weird. Very weird. She was like, they get a thing like she's going to take this girl in, like, because she's going to be a foster child. It's like, but I'll take care of you. Like, what? Why are you telling the kid that? It's, why are you telling why are you this kid? Why are acting that? so weird? Very weird. And uh, also, uh, Dr. Kirkpatrick even tried to cooperate and told them what was up. Right. He, he called the hospital. He called John Hopkins and he told, told the, them. He told John Hopkins. He told the police. He told everybody. The social workers, social all workers, that. All that stuff. Uh, everything that he has done. And like, no, I told them to do that. I prescribed this. I did this. Right. They went to Mexico. He collaborated everything that they said, and they didn't care. They didn't care. Uh, Not even a little bit. Sally Smith lied in her disposition. She lied. Said that she didn't know. She said she didn't know. She had she no never talked to him. Right. Nothing like so that. So it was, it, was, it was all bad. And she did not get interviewed this whole time. She did not get interviewed in it. She did like a small piece on the phone, but right. would not talk would about not it. not talk about it. For real. Right. She did like, she was like just defending herself lightly, but wouldn't, didn't want to do the doc. The doc. She knew she fucked up. Um, they never told, and they, well, you shouldn't tell Megan why she was separated from her parents. Would, would you, should yeah. you tell her? No, you no, she was her. a child. Yeah, she's a child. She's a child. They never told her. She was a child. But, and then it started to boil over to the house because the parents started arguing. Over just the communication. Right, because dad, she felt like dad wouldn't push hard enough. And he was telling her that she's pushing too hard. Like, they're not going to give us our daughter back. We just have to say yes, that we're going to do this stuff just to get her back. And she was like, no, I'm not saying that. And so, like I said, so they was like, all right, mom is the problem. They let dad talk to her, go see her. They would not let mom go do it. They would not let mom ever go see her. She never got, yeah. But we, I don't want to skip part. So after they got into it, uh, the house felt in shambles. And then it turns out this is not the first time this has happened with social services. No, hold on. I think we need to. Am I skipping something? I don't think I'm skipping anything. What happened to mom? What happened to mom? Yeah, I think. So, like like you said, it, it, it tore the family apart. Seriously. They did. And um, mom made the ultimate sacrifice that she thinks she, that she thought she had to do to get her daughter back. She ended up. Um, she, un- hanging, she hung herself in the garage. She unalived herself. Um in hopes that her daughter will be able to come back home. Yes. And it was terrible because her brother found her. Yes, in the garage. Dad and son, they come back from going to see the daughter. Um, and they didn't go in the garage at all, but her brother, the mom's brother, come in, go straight to go check on his sister and she was swinging. That sucked. That's, that's, that's probably, that was only sad. That was really sad. I was like, God, this guy. Sad. That was, that sucks. She yeah, didn't even no, get to say goodbye to her mom. Not only was she taken away from her mom, she didn't even get to say goodbye to her. I mean, the, what was her name? Bita? Bita? Bita. Thought that was the best thing. You know, she, a mother through and through. That's right. They were, well, she probably, th- yeah. And it's, know. bro, it's, it's so messed up because at the end of the day, it worked. Yeah, she was back at home and that's really funny. like shortly after like that's messed up and you've and well what you also find out this wasn't social service first time doing this shit 
Right, yeah. So it after after they case, right, they they trying to sue. They trying um, to sue John, John Hopkins, Hopkins. Um, and the lady. Uh, Social services. They trying to sue. Sally, Sally Smith. Smith. Yep. Sally Smith. Um, and with that comes a lot of digging, and like he said, just to find out that. Sally Smith was in charge of a lot of kids being um, taken to taken talk about captured. <laughs> that's what it. That's what it basically is. They're just captured. Like if you go to the hospital, you're expecting to get help. Help, right? And you're expecting to get help to go back home to be healthy with your family. And your family is not really putting you in danger. She just thought that. She just thought that because she was giving her prescribed, uh, prescribed medicine. Right. And like, just help me out so I can get my daughter back home. I mean, like, they weren't in no bad living situation. 100%. Because there's kids out there that should be in Child Protective Services and not. And they ain't finding those parents. Right. They getting the parents who actually love their kids. And it was like, that's just weird. That was the part that. No, I'm pretty sure Sally Smith have saved some children from some bad situations. But when you have a long list of families that you snatch children from and you're wrong, like like dead wrong, dead. and like with a lot of evidence <laughs> showing that you're wrong, that's 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 when a red flag occurs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, not see the red at that time, but that's cool. Yeah, nah. So it was a lot of cases. At the end of this doc, it was a lot of families, lot of families. saying they went into the hospital for something sim- like simple. A kid like hurt themselves and had some bruises. The kids, kids crazy and dr tyler smith go oh no this is munchausen by proxy we need to remove this kid from this household like come on now and her word is final she say take the kid the kid is gone gone. there's no further oversight there's no one she's reporting this to she say it's a bad situation for this kid and it's over nothing you could do now you gotta fight Right, and a lot of families, like like I said, uh, the dad Jack, what, what he wanted to do was just say yes, yes, whatever terms, um, I'm I'm gonna agree to them. But when you agree to these terms, you give up your right to sue because basically you're admitting guilt. So when it comes to the Kowalskis, since they didn't agree to those terms, they was able to sue. Right, they were, they were able to sue. Uh... I don't think they got the results they wanted. They're still trying to sue till this day. They're still trying to sue till this day. I think the last court case they had was uh, last year, actually, fall of last year. Mm-hmm. And they lost that one when they were trying to sue John Hopkins. No, it was it was postponed, it was postponed. because they're waiting, waiting on the ruling to see if they can sue for civil liability. Okay. And so while they were still waiting on that, they um, the judge was like, I'm not going to keep pushing this further y'all just got to refile this right so they was hoping to keep it on the docket to keep it coming up so whenever they got the okay to sue for civil liability they can just do it they wouldn't have to refile but the judge was like look this has been sitting on this docket for a while it's taking up space in the courtroom in this little vanilla folder <laughs> just sitting here this little folder is taking up all the let's space on my desk space. let's just get this over with so yeah and that uh, that concludes that dot. That's all it is. It just ends like that. It's like this how this end didn't get no justice, no justice, none, none. Taking no care justice. of Maya. Taking care of Maya. No justice. I'm mad because in the beginning you said Megan. Who the who the hell was Megan? Uh, what? Oh shit! You know what? I typed Megan, and then you know what's crazy? I typed Megan. Then the whole time I got Maya through this whole thing. I want y'all to remember in the beginning, I said Maya. <laughs> and also remember, he said rad and not red. What's more important, me not saying red, maybe, or you getting the child's name wrong? And right, then said con- it like I was wrong. Okay, this concludes this episode. Let's not. What do you rate it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give this a 4.2. Out of 5? Yeah. Okay. Why? Uh,. I like the shock value. I didn't expect the mom to kill herself. Yeah, that was. Honest. You can't say kill herself. Unalive. Oh, I didn't expect her to. Unalive herself. Yes, to do what she did. You you just refused to say unalive. Unalive. Okay. <laughs> it's the same thing. I didn't expect her to do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, it was nice to not see black people in a folder. 
<laughs> not in the focus? Not yeah, not in the fold of just all of that. That was a black family. Black family. At the end, when they family. when it was showing all the families that Doctor Sally Smith had affected, oh, I didn't even catch that. that was I a, probably was, just so like family. it was all these. You you think she ain't snatched no black kids from they? Oh yeah, I know. Come she, on now, I know she, it's some crack Come babies on. out she, there that she, got snatched. She took up. a well off family's child. Yeah, they yeah. was able to take their kid to Mexico to get put under a coma. Yes, they had a built in pool. You hear me? You don't think she taking little black kids? Uh, hey, she took some crack babies. I know she got some crack babies. I'm, 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 we ain't talking about the ones that should have been taken. Oh, okay. We're talking about the ones that should not have been. Yeah, oh, yeah. I yeah, 100%. Oh, 100%. So, anyway, I'm sorry. That, that body count is up there. What, what's your rating? I gave it 4.2. That's why. Uh, the, the Sally Smith, she was a villain. It was a villain in this one. Oh, like, for sure. It's, it's for two sure. of them. It's two villains. For sure. It was like watching a Spider-Man movie when you don't know who the main villain really <laughs> is. You find out who the main villain is. But, yeah, that's why. But what about you? Um, like a four point eight. Okay, it was great. It was a great dot. Um, learned a lot. I really learned a lot. Um, kept me interested throughout. A lot of times these docs, I get bored halfway in between and just gotta power through to get to a conclusion. <laughs> I didn't feel like I had to do this for this. <laughs> you did not. You can watch it all the way through. And we did not complain about the time at all. Like yeah, normally, it was a little. Long. It was a little. Oh, okay. That's was, what she said. It was but. a little, little. Hopefully, she said that. Um, but not bad. Not in a bad way. Oh. All right. No, I was just oh. moving up. I was just scooting. Not in a bad way. Um, the only thing that kept it from a five, which no, no fault to them, it was no real conclusion. No real conclusion. They would have just had to wait to the doc for a real conclusion, which was. Unnecessary. Yeah, she could. So four point eight. Netflix 8. just ran out of stuff to post. That's all. It no, was. It was, she was gonna wait another two, three years to. to two, do three years. That's how long that's postponed to. No, no, no. That's I'm talking up. about the court for a lawsuit. Oh my god, that's long. Yeah, no, they, it's still still ongoing. Like right now, they still fighting it. So it's like, oh, it's still trying to sue. So well, we go wait till they finish suing. They, they, like I said, beyond their control. Well, the court system just been prolonging everything. So. Oh, it's, 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 Judicial system is <laughs> <Did terrible. you? laughs> The judicial? what? I can't say judicial. it. Right. Judicial. Judicial. Yeah. There you go. The judicial system. Judicial. Has judicial. <laughs> the judicial. All right. <laughs> judicial, but. Judicial. <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> okay. All right. That can. The jujitsu. That's hilarious. J- judicial. <laughs> All right. That concludes this episode. Let's talk about it. Uh, follow us on YouTube, Facebook at Let's Talk About It, TikTok as well. Uh, like us on Instagram, LDAI, LDAI Pod 22. Uh, follow me at Florida Comedy on all social media. And you can follow me on all social media that simply just will. We're done. Again, if y'all got any docs y'all want us to watch and review, please put them in the comments. Please. All please. right. Peace out. It's on a beat, make it boom.